Jen, I'd like to thank you for taking the time out to spend the evening with us. I have a feeling that you're going to leave with a whole new perspective. Um, so we have a really, really special guest on tonight. I'm very excited to have her on with us. Um, a little bit about our speaker. Leslie Stevens has actually been involved in the world of pediatric sleep, breathing, and airway health for over 35 years. So she has a ton of experience. Um, she is the CEO of Healthy Start, and more importantly, she's the mother of three. And her goal and desire is to provide every advantage for children to allow them to live healthy and happy lives. Um, something that you'll learn tonight is that there is a silent epidemic affecting nine out of 10 children. And this epidemic manifests itself in a variety of symptoms that can easily be overlooked, misdiagnosed, and most unfortunately left untreated. It's absolutely critical that our children are evaluated for sleep and breathing habits. So Leslie is not only our fearless leader, she actually lectures and trains all over the world. I mean, she's just everywhere. I don't think there's a question in reference to the subject of pediatric sleep, breathing, airway, and healthy starts connection that she cannot answer. And, you know, really when you have the backing of a company like Healthy Start by Orthotain, you have over 51 years, over 4 million cases, and tons of research to back you. So Leslie's mission is to educate both parents and dental professionals to ensure children a lifetime of health, happiness, and success. So I'm actually going to take this time to hand the floor and the mic over to Le Leslie Stevens. Well, thank you, Susie, so much for um, bringing us up to date here this evening. And um, I am Looking forward to obviously spending the evening or a brief portion of the evening to really um, educate you in a very exciting um, area of sleep, breathing, and airway. And um, having that conversation that basically starts with um, talking about our children and um, looking at the different maybe outward symptoms that we see that we can actually determine and understand what is going on with them can determine um, what we're seeing. I'm, I'm having a little difficulty getting my PowerPoint up here, so let me see if I can minimize this so we can get started here. Here we go. Sometimes technical difficulties are always interesting, aren't they? <laughs> so anyways, tonight we're gonna to talk a little bit about um, pediatrics and looking at breathing, airway, and sleep issues that um, will plague and do plague nine out of 10 children with one or more outward symptoms of sleep. So when we talk about these outward symptoms, we're looking at different areas that basically give us a clue that maybe there are some other areas or underlying root causes that are present in these children. So these outward symptoms that we see include mouth breathing, snoring, tooth grinding, swollen adenoids and tonsils, chronic allergies, eczema, asthma, ADD, ADHD, aggressive behavior, depression, um, irritability, anger, peer problems, few friends, bedwetting, difficulty in school, especially in the subjects of math, science, spelling delayed or stunted growth, restless sleep, nightmares, morning headaches, daytime drowsiness, frequently waking up at night, sleep talking and walking. So um, many of these outward symptoms, parents will look at as isolated symptoms. Um, I, I think when you first have this conversation with a parent, they'll, they'll look at you like, I had no idea, maybe, these outward symptoms are all linked to maybe a single underlying root causes or maybe a few underlying root causes. But typically as a parent, we'll look at an isolated outward symptom and we'll basically address it maybe with a specialist. And when you look at this, the specialist can look at that isolated condition and treat it with medication or maybe psychiatric testing, counseling, therapy, surgery. Um, many of these areas are what we're looking at or how we're treating each of these outward symptoms. And maybe a child has asthma and allergies and maybe ADD and ADHD, and they're on three or four different medications for all different areas. 
when maybe these outward symptoms are all related. So, so frequently when we look at these areas in isolation and a lot of these types of treatments being drugs and testing and therapy seem to only address the symptoms and not the root cause. They tend to be short-term band-aids. They often involve several drugs, many with side effects, and they can be costly, painful, time-consuming, and ineffective. So what are the root causes of these outward symptoms? So research over the past 20 years has linked each of these outward symptoms to a root cause, such as mouth breathing, narrow palate, improper tongue placement, and jaw relationships. So let's talk about screening for sleep. So the first area that I would obviously look at are the outward symptoms just by facial cues. So take a look at these two children. Immediately you can look at the girl on the left and see the large um, circles under the eyes. You can see how the head is lurched forward. Look at the boy on the left. Again, circles under their eyes. Look at the parted lips, a mouth breather. Look at how that lower lip rolls. Also look at the figuration. It almost looks like he has a double chin. In fact, this child isn't heavy at all, but the facial structure and the lack of development in the lower third gives him more of a full face or what we sometimes call a double chin. Also look at the profile of the patient. So you can take basically a line going down the forehead and you can see the deficiency of growth in the lower jaw. Sometimes we see it in both the maxilla and the mandible, but look at the parted lips. Look at the rolled lip. Look at the circles under their eyes. This particular girl has that same type of feature, the rolled lip, but look at how the chin and the neck blend together. Another indication that there is lack of growth in the lower third of the face that can impact basically how a child's airway is developing and also how they breathe and how they sleep. So we use an initial screening tool, and this is an excellent way both to educate a parent, but also to get a very good idea of what is happening with that child, especially at nighttime when they sleep. So here are the 27 most prevalent outward symptoms of sleep. And we want the parent to identify these outward symptoms, but then also put a degree of severity onto it. Zero being the least, five being the most pronounced. Um, what is interesting is some of these um, outward symptoms, especially mouth breathing, we know will have seven to eight other outward symptoms. At the same time, we find number 27 is speech problems. Well, if they're having a hard time in the development of the lower third of their face, tendency is that that tongue is not in the right position, or the tongue is laying low, or the tongue is not functioning properly. So if that's being the case, we have problems with pronunciation, phonetics, different areas like that. So this sleep questionnaire is just a very complete and thorough way of evaluating a child. Um, we are so excited that we were at the ADA um, symposium in August, and we did have a round table that basically combined um, pediatricians, ENTs, sleep physicians, orthodontists, dentists, pediatric dentists, and all of them basically wanted to find one screening tool that they could also all use um, in the initial evaluation of a child. And I am proud to say that Healthy Start is the sleep questionnaire that they've selected to basically evaluate and go through the different characteristics of it to um, determine um, between all the entities of a unanimous first tool. So. Um, I think it has a lot of place and a lot of um, purpose in what we're doing. Also, just to note, um, the ADA has put together a policy. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It was passed last October, and it basically talks about each, the guidelines for every dentist to basically be responsible for evaluating, screening children on pediatric sleep issues and also looking at the improper growth and development that might be occurring. So all of what we're talking about tonight is basically 
in the guidelines of the ADA so that you're having more information on how to evaluate a child, what that screening might look like, as well as giving you opportunity to find different ways of helping a child that is experiencing improper growth and development. We conducted a, a very impressive um, study on sleep and understanding these outward symptoms. And this study was done on over 500 children. And they evaluated through the Healthy Start Sleep questionnaire to determine um, what was the most prevalent condition, um, what similarities did we see, um, what did we see from uh, age two to 19 in the degree and the amount of conditions that were still prevalent. So the results of this study basically informed us that mouth breathing and snoring are commonly associated with more sleep disorder breathing symptoms than any other symptom study. Nine out of 10 children had one or more outward symptoms of sleep disorder breathing. 60% of the sample had four or more symptoms. One out of five children experienced bedwetting. Between the ages of four and 12, 92.6% of the symptoms did not self-correct, while 30% worsened with age. Um, as I said, mouth breathing was the most prevalent, 43%. You can see the different percentages of the different outward symptoms. Um, one of the interesting characteristics is mouth breathing during night. That means opening their mouth to breathe, maybe audible breathing. Sometimes parents say, well, my kid doesn't snore. Well, you can still mouth breathe. It doesn't mean that every mouth breather is snoring. However, if you are snoring, you do mouth breathe. So by opening the mouth just a half an inch while you're sleeping, you basically reduce the airway by six millimeters. Well, a seven-year-old's airway is seven millimeters. So what you're doing is minimizing that airway so that child is breathing through one millimeter of airway space. Imagine what that's like. Do you think it's enough oxygen for the body? Absolutely not. And REM sleep, basically requires oxygen. So these kids are not getting enough oxygen, therefore they do not participate or enjoy REM sleep when they're sleeping. So these are really important properties that are associated with these outward symptoms. Um, as I said, if a child mouth breathes, we would tend to see them have seven to eight other outward symptoms. And these are some of the most frequently other outward symptoms that mouth breathers basically um, exhibited. Implications of this study? Well, the findings show that sleep disorder breathing is much more common and affects children even as young as two years of age. Begin treatment as early as possible to ensure permanent changes. Identifying outward symptoms displayed in 90% of the children that enter your practice can significantly reduce this epidemic and enable you to successfully treat the overall health of your patients. So let's talk about airway and addressing the habitual issues. As we talked about mouth breathing and um, skeletal problems that basically um, diminish the size of the airway, and sometimes a really good visual for a parent to understand what we're talking about is talking about an airway that would resemble a coffee stirrer. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried it. I actually um, did my own little study where I wanted to see what it really felt like to breathe through one millimeter of airway space. So I was going to spend the entire day trying to breathe through a coffee stirrer. Well, I got about 10 minutes into it, maybe 15, and I had the most massive headache I've ever had, um, et cetera, and nothing ha helped it. And um, I mean, the takeaway from that experience was I can't imagine a child or an adult trying to breathe through a millimeter of airway space. It's impossible. Um, the effects that the body takes, um, the headaches, it was really insurmountable to, for me to make it through the day with that type of headache. So I can't imagine what a child must feel like um, trying to go to school, trying to behave, um, it, it would be extremely difficult. So what type of airway are we trying to produce? Well, we're trying to produce an airway that resembles a garden hose. Um, make that comparison. It's very visual. It's very understandable for a parent and, and hopefully as you as well. 
So, um, so many times a parent will say, well, why is this all of a sudden coming to light? Why is this sounding like it's an epidemic and where has it been all along? Well, it has been progressing. And the reason why we're seeing more and more of this is because basically of the industrialization. Um, we have pretty much a lack of breastfeeding. Um, very often, both parents are working. Um, to breastfeed a child for two years is difficult. Um, even if a parent um, is feeding their child breast milk, many times it comes in the form of a nipple bottle. And unfortunately, a nipple bottle and a pacifier both depress the tongue, um, create suction in the mouth that constrict the arches, um, basically create an improper swallow. It really deficient, um, deficient uh, it, um, reduces the ability and um, the capability of the tongue position, the strength of the tongue, the proper swallow, um, the development of the oral cavity. Um, another area that basically also contributes is a soft diet. So these are all areas that, you know, a parent, I, I always say walk lightly because when you bring this up to a parent and you talk about possibly the lack of breastfeeding, most parents will say, I knew it was my fault. I absolutely knew that I was the reason that these other issues are occurring. Please be careful. I mean, there's so many parents, you know, I always say we can't look back. We can always look forward. So we're going to address it. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to take care of it. So um, I would, that would be my point, just to, just to be a little wary of how we um, go about that explanation. So what did you as dentist or orthodontist or pediatric dentist um, are looking for? So when we see a patient that has the open bite, are we thinking to ourselves, huh, probably a prolonged pacifier, maybe bottle, probably a tongue thrust, most likely a mouth breather. You can start almost getting your list of criteria down. You already know you have about 16 things you're checking off just by looking at the position of the teeth. Many times I say the orthodontic condition is an outward symptom of other health issues. Well, fortunately, we're going to look and treat both the habitual and the orthodontic. So when we're talking to a parent about airway, um, something like this is a good schematic to give a parent kind of an idea of where the nasal cavity is, what the function is, where the hard palate and the soft palate meet, um, tongue, how the tongue functions, um, the airway. These are all important areas for a parent to understand that if we have a reduction or um, improper growth and development, it's gonna affect other areas. And if the airway is restricted, it's gonna affect other areas. If we mouth breathe, it's gonna, so you can kind of see within the configuration or the architecture of the oral cavity, how all of these properties play into the equation of sleep breathing and airway. Um, so many times we're, we're gonna focus on mouth breathing, but what we should say, we are going to look for nasal breathing. Nasal breathing is very critical. So many kids that have habitual problems, typically we'll see it stem with or start with mouth breathing and we're going to eliminate the mouth breathing and encourage the nasal breathing. And the reason is the nose is basically responsible for many functions. And these functions include um, serving as an air passageway. Um, the nose will warm and moisten the inhaled air. Um, the membrane traps dust, pollen, bacteria, and other foreign matters. It contains receptors which sort out odors. It aids in pronunciation and the quality of voice. So when we look at children, so often we see them in their car seat. Um, unfortunately, look at her mouth breathing. Um, we should know that 43% of the population, and I will say at least 43%, um, you will see as mouth breathers. And those are the kids that especially are in need of immediate um, treatment. And having a parent understand that and identify it is critical in the conversation, but then most importantly, the treatment. So I want you to take a listen to Eli. This is an excellent video. And, and look at how often and how long he stops breathing. 
and look at his facial structure and also look at what the mother does in order to help that child breathe better and rest more peacefully. So let's take a listen. That was holding it. That was holding it. He's still holding it. He's trying to take in air. There he goes. Now watch. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's holding it. He's still holding his breath. And he's going to gulp it again. There he goes. That was it again. And again. He's holding. He's holding. He's crying. There he goes. So this has been three minutes and 15 seconds. And you can see how many episodes he's had of not getting calm breaths in. Now, watch what happens when I take his jaw and I just bring it forward. If I can, let's see if I can. And I open his airway. Just bring his airway forward. Now listen to Airway, I'm opening his airway, just pulling his jaw forward ever so slightly. And now he's breathing through his nose quietly. His mouth is a little bit open, but he's breathing through his nose. Just by hear how quietly he's breathing, you don't hear him anymore. And all I did is gently bring his jaw forward. It's amazing, isn't it, that um, just by preventing the mouth breathing, bringing the lower jaw forward, allowing the child to breathe through their nose, changes the whole dynamics of how he's sleeping. So this is part of how the Healthy Start treatment is going to start addressing these issues in these children. So we will watch and see basically how we um, move the child from a compromised airway into something that is basically allowing them to breathe better. So when we talk about airway and looking at what a constricted airway looks like versus a normal airway, these are two different children, both five years old. And on the left-hand side, you can see that the child has a restricted or constricted airway. Now realize this is a Ceph um, and it's in a vertical position. So this is kind of best scenario. If we had the capability of taking a Ceph in a horizontal position, obviously the muscles relax and there's a tendency to close the airway even further. So we always say we have to just we're just as good as what our tools are. But you can see 21% of the population will have a constricted airway in a vertical position, more of a skeletal problem. Now the child on the right is obviously the airway we're looking for, an open airway. Remember how we symbolized it looking more like a garden hose as opposed to a coffee stir. We talked a little bit about a patient with um, mouth breathing and how that affects the airway. So this is the same patient. The one on the left is basically a normal airway. So great, we took a SAF and we said, wow, that looks amazing. We have no issues. Well, no, we have all these outward symptoms. We also know that nine out of 10 children have these outward symptoms, and yet we only see 21% that have a skeletal um, issue with the size of the airway. So we anticipate that a majority of these kids are gonna have airway issues due to habitual problems. So just by opening the mouth by a half an inch, 
you will see the restriction that happens in the airway. So that's why the mouth breathing is so critical in our discussion of outward symptoms and the causes and the detriment of um, lack of air and oxygen that the patient basically um, enjoys, especially during nighttime. Um, sometimes hard to determine what is the airway? How do we tell a parent what a seven millimeter airway looks like? Well, an interesting way is have the child look at the tip of his pinky. That usually is about a seven millimeter airway. And if that child basically um, restricts a mouth breeze, restricts their airway by six millimeters, it will do reduce the airway size down to almost a pinhole. It is so small, but it's a great visual for parents and for us to understand, wow, <laughs> that, that's an enormous reduction in the amount of airway space that's available. Um, this is a very interesting case, and it kind of brings home the idea of what we're doing with airway and um, what we would anticipate to see with the use of the Healthy Start treatment. So the child on the left is a nine-year-old child. And typically how we determine a normal airway size is we take the age of the patient starting at age five and multiply it by 10. So this child being nine years old, we would anticipate his airway to be nine times 10 is 90 square millimeters. Obviously his measurement is 53.6. So he was restricted to begin with. Um, as a child develops, we will anticipate the child developing up until about age 17 where we peak. And typical airway measurements is between 150 and 170 square millimeters. Unfortunately, at age 21, our airway starts to deteriorate over the lifetime. And um, so many of our adult sleep apnea patients um, we know they have a restricted airway, but the question has always been, did they reach their maximum at 17 or were they deficient at that age? And that's what led to sleep apnea over their lifetime. Well, the interesting area is this child, obviously deficient, was put into the first appliance in the Healthy Start system. You can see the appliance in his mouth. And this is a month later, and this airway is now at 337 square millimeters. Not only is it six times greater than what we saw in a child, but it's over double what we would anticipate as peak in an adult airway. So over a course of a lifetime, if that child or that young adult begins that process at 330 square millimeters. At 21, when we start deteriorating, is it gonna make that big of an impact? Probably not. But we're in the process of doing a few um, research studies to evaluate this further. But it is a very exciting area of what we're looking at in regard to um, airway and the effects that we have, not only on the child today, but long-term effects for them as well. Here's a, a, a diagram of what we just talked about, um, where you can see the dramatic change in that airway in the course of one month with the first appliance, the habit corrector um, in the dimension of the airway. So we had talked a little bit about mouth breathing and snoring and how mouth breathing is so critical. And understanding why we have these issues of mouth breathing and snoring basically goes back to extended bottle feeding and pacifier use, um, poor tongue position and abnormal swallowing. Um, sugar processed foods also are in the equation um, and also poor oral habits such as thumb, finger, lip sucking, tongue thrusting, etc. Now mouth breathing and snoring can lead to a compromised airway. In a compromised airway we see a reduction in airway um, restriction of airflow, um, reduced oxygen, increased CO2. Um, this can affect the brain function, immune and endocrine systems. Um, it creates swollen adenoids and tonsils. 
long, low tongue position, tongue thrust, underdeveloped dental arches, overjet, open bite, cross bite, and the compromised airway will lead to sleep disorder breathing. So we'll see restless sleep, um, ADD, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic allergies, nightmares, daytime drowsiness, et cetera. So you can see how the cycle is continuously um, cause and effect. Um, it's amazing all the issues and you can kind of put it in perspective what we're looking at. Here's an interesting study that occurred and it basically was looking at the brain function. Um, through an MRI. So the first three images you see on this screen basically is um, a normal brain function after a normal night's sleep. So you can see how active that is. The second series of three is basically the brain function after one night of sleep deprivation. You can see how little brain function there is just by the lack of one night's sleep. So you can see the effect it really has on brain function. So now let's talk about Healthy Start. Um, Healthy Start is a unique system that basically was created by Orthotain. We have been, um, we will be celebrating 52 years in May. Um, we've treated over 4 million children worldwide. The system basically um, breaks down into different areas. So we have the toddler appliance, then we treat the kids, which is a series of appliances. The preteen, again, a series of two appliances, and the teen and adult, also a series of two appliances. So say you have a child that comes into your office at age five. This would be the entire system that they would basically implement for them. It will start with the first appliance, which will deal with habits. The second and third appliance is a guidance appliance, which will guide the incoming teeth. But at the same time, it will um, correct any overbite, any overjet, open bite, gummy smile, cross bite, class three, all with passive nighttime wear. It's an amazing appliance. Um, it expands the arches, it, it, it corrects gummy smiles, it aligns the teeth, it, 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 it's truly amazing how if we catch the child during their growth and development, we can create and do what nature should have done in a very easy way that not only solves the problem for today, but it is a long-term. We get very permanent results. And the reason being is the teeth have grown in straight. Another way of thinking about it is as the teeth grow in, fiber bundles develop and those fiber bundles anchor the teeth and they become your retainer for life. So we see very little relapse in these children. So again, Healthy Start is addressing the root causes by expanding the dental arches, establishing nasal breathing, training the tongue, eliminating bad habits, advancing the mandible to correct overjet, encouraging proper facial and body growth, and correcting most orthodontic problems. And these are all done typically passively at night. Um, when we have more permanent teeth, maybe the second appliance would be wearing maybe two hours a day. So it's a very manageable system, um, and it basically incorporates all the areas and root causes that we see in the airway issue. So let's talk about the first appliance, the habit corrector, and why and how these appliances have built-in myofunctional therapy. Um, the appliance has features that basically create the myofunctional therapy that we would use to help in addressing these um, functional or oral habits that we see. So for instance, the habit corrector has expansion tabs, and this will begin the expansion of the upper arch. As you know, the tongue is, should be in the top of the palate of the mouth. Um, when we say the letter N, where that sound ends should be where the tongue should be placed. So as the child is wearing this appliance, we're gonna begin the expansion of the arches. Um, with these appliances, at peak time, we can expect about six millimeters of expansion. Um, depending on what area of growth you incur, um, I would anticipate at least three to four millimeters of expansion. 
But if we can get them at the sweet spot, we can actually get even more than that up to about 6.7 millimeters. Um, there's a lingual shelf that is literally like a ramp. So it's activated by a swallow. So every time the child swallows, it lifts the tongue, it puts it in the proper place in the palate of the mouth, it prevents tongue thrust, and it allows the child to strengthen their tongue, position their tongue in the right position, but also correct their swallow. We also have prongs here that basically prevent the tongue thrust. We also have two little tabs that prevent the lower chin from drifting back. At the same time, the flange in the front will prevent mouth breathing, encourage nasal breathing. Um, we also can use the pull tab to hook to night clothes. So if a child has a mouth breathing problem and we are eventually reducing and eliminating that, we might see the appliance fall out at the initial dates or initial nights um, when the child starts to wear this. So by placing or hooking it to the night clothes, we can find it easily. At the same time, when the patient puts the appliance in the mouth, we can use the pull tab to have them try to hold that appliance in their mouth. You'll see that a mouth breather tends to have um, limited muscle tone in their lips and tend to have weakness. So by pulling it, you're actually strengthening those lips for them. Um, we want to look at um, an improper swallow. Um, the easiest way to gauge um, how a patient swallows and gauge their improvement is give them a glass of water, have them take a swallow. Typically, when we swallow a glass of water, we should only see the neck muscles moving. If you're seeing facial movement, that means the tongue is in the wrong position and the swallow is basically ineffectual. So um, absolutely, I would look at that, especially at the initial appointment, but I would do that every time the patient comes in and see how that improvement is gaining. As I said, the myofunctional therapy that is built into these appliances are activated by a swallow. So at night, we swallow one time a minute. During the day, we swallow two times a minute. So if a child wears this just passively at night when they sleep, we anticipate seeing them repeat this habit over 500 times um, each and every night. So it's very powerful, very quick. The repetitiveness um, basically breaks the habits, creates new habits, and um, we get the children, child on the road to recovery very quickly. Um, here's a sample of a study that was 220 children. Um, we basically watched them for a five month period of time and we were watching to see what kinds of rates of correction that we see. So for instance, headaches. We saw that 18% of that study um, indicated they had morning headaches every day. Um, that represented 40 children. Out of that, we saw 98% of the cases having improvement. The mean correction of those improvements was 94%. The mean correction of the entire sample was 91%. And the percent of the cases with 100% uh, correction was 85%. So you can go through all the different areas that we see on the sleep questionnaire and the percentage of correction that occurred within the first five months. So it's pretty, it's extremely quick and very effective. So a, a big conversation within the sleep is talking also about ADD and ADHD. As we all unfortunately know, um, the ADD and ADHD has become an epidemic. Um, typically, when um, the way a child is diagnosed is through a cri list of criteria that a um, medical professional will evaluate to determine if that labeling of ADD and ADHD is appropriate. What is interesting is that list of criteria is the same list we use to determine sleep disorder breathing. So the question has always been, can they be misdiagnosed? Absolutely. Actually, the most recent um, research indicated that 85% of the kids with ADD and ADHD had sleep issues. So it is very common and our recommendation is if you have a child 
that either has been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD or possibly is in the process, we say evaluate sleep first. Um, sleep is an easy fix and it is something that can easily be addressed. And we can see how much improvement that child has in a relatively short period of time. And then we can make that determination if further um, evaluation or um, uh, diagnosis of an ADA, ADD or ADHD um, labeling would be required. But I, I also think that even if a child has some form of ADD and ADHD, if they also have sleep, it's just gonna aggravate and accentuate the ADD and ADH behaviors. So I, I always encourage parents, investigate the sleep. Let's see where they land, and then we can address from there. Um, there was a very large study that evaluated over 13,000 patients um, on sleep disorder breathing, and her name was Karen Bonick. Um, she found that sleep disorder breathing increases the risk of ADD and ADHD by at least 50%. ADD and ADHD patients have little or no REM sleep, but have Delta sleep. Patients without ADD and ADHD have primarily REM sleep and Delta sleep. Um, in the study that we conducted, we saw that ADD and ADHD were present in 25.2% of the cases. Some interesting statistics in regard to ADD and ADHD, 50% um, of the children are held back one grade, 30% are held back two grades. So I got news for you. If it is a sleep issue rather than ADD and ADHD, you can hold back a kid 10 grades and it's not gonna make any difference. They're still gonna have the same problems um, that they've had because of the sleep. Um, another interesting study revealed kids that have sleep disorder breathing basically have 10 to 20 fewer IQ points. Um, you know, in my world, that means college or no college. But also the study went on just a step further and said, how do we value uh, an IQ point? And they actually put a monetary value during the life of time of a child. An IQ point is worth $170,000. So, you know, if we can, if we can intercept if we can remove those barriers, allow and provide the ability for that child to sleep, breathe, and develop an airway better, imagine how far they can go. Imagine the gift that you can give them in order to succeed in life. Um, it is mind-boggling the differences and the changes that can occur by just identifying these underlying root causes and provide them with a treatment that can easily overcome develop, improve, and create the proper habits for them. So let's talk about how we promote this growth and development. Um, cranial, normal cranial facial growth basically um, continues in a forward and down direction. Um, you will see that our appliances basically promote the forward growth that we would anticipate. We're looking to develop the airway. Um, we try to do this before age 12 you can see most of the cranial facial growth by the time a child reaches age 12 is pretty much complete. In fact, 89% of the males and 94% in females have finished or completed their growth. So the earlier we can treat, the better. Um, we also found in the study that um, if you see a symptom, 92.6% of the time, that outward symptom will not self-correct. In fact, 30% will even worsen with age. So the comment is, if you see it, let's fix it. Let's not wait. It's critical to start early. We prevent so many other problems from happening. The habits are less ingrained, so it's easier to correct. So I would encourage you, look early, look at those patients. Even if you see older patients, ask them, See if they have younger children, identify them. Um, if you treat sleep patients already, your adult sleep apnea patients, this is everything you dreamt you could do for them. And I'll tell you, ask them. Ask them about when they were a child. Pull out that sleep questionnaire, ask them to think back. And I promise you, you know what they'll tell you? 
we absolutely, this is me as a child. So many of these children and the children that you're seeing right now have these issues. And if they're not corrected, obviously they cause havoc in the child's life now because they're asked to perform at school. Um, our kids are asked to perform at a very high level. And if, not, if they're not 100%, it's impossible for them. Um, how many times do we get frustrated with kids that they're not focusing or um, they're lethargic or they're bouncing off the walls? Um, these are maybe things that are out of their control just based on the lack of sleep. So uh, my message is always look at these, really take note of what we're talking about. And if anything else, please just screen your patients. Look for these issues. Um, when we look at a child, remember we talked about looking at their profile. Look at where that deficiency of growth is. Look at how deficient this child is. Remember we talked about the lips parted, um, tendency talking about mouth breathing. This child had all of those. The deficiency of growth, um, the child was a mouth breather. Um, when I show you what her um, oral cavity looks like, you can probably already guess she has an enormous overjet. Was she a finger sucker? Absolutely. Uh, mouth breather, check that one off as well. She also was a bedwetter. She also had a lot of problems in school socializing. Um, it, it, she was just a tired child. So this is her about a year and a half to two years later. Um, basically the development, she went from primary dentition as a five-year-old into the mixed dentition as a seven-year-old. Look at how much forward growth Healthy Start created. We re basically um, received 54% greater mandibular growth than the control sample by using these appliances. It is tremendous the amount of growth that we can create. Now I will say be a little bit careful when you start talking about the forward growth of the jaws. Immediately a mom will say, oh my gosh, I don't want my child to look like Jay Leno. No, there's a difference between Jay Leno and being able to provide the proper amount of growth and development. So um, we have these images available for you and I would absolutely utilize them so a parent can understand what you're talking about. So here's the fun part. Let's take a look at some of the cases and you can see um, what we typically see in Healthy Start cases. I'm gonna give you a whole variety um, of different um, areas and different looks so you can kind of see what we do. So here's a child, seven years of age. Um, the father filled out um, the sleep questionnaire. We will also continue them um, filling out a sleep questionnaire. And I would ask that the same parent fill it out because we want to have the same kind of um, guidelines and the same criteria um, that one parent had initiated with this so they know the improvements. So take a look at the initial. Four, 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 one, three, four, three, four, four. Look down here. Four, five, three, four, 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 five, four, four. These are large numbers, and these are an enormous amount of conditions. Um, I would say this is a severe case. Um, take a look at the speech problems. Very delayed speech. Didn't say any words up till age three or four. So already, you know, just by looking at this, we probably have a sleep issue prevalent. So now let's take a look at what the child looks like. You can see circles under their eyes, but look at their dentition. Look at the deep overbite. Um, dentists call this 100% overbite. Um, we, in orthodontic terms, we can talk about it being, you know, a seven millimeter overbite. Um, take a look at the shape of the arch. It's a square shaped arch. Um, the uppers, they don't look too bad, but my guess is he's a mouth breather as well. Um, and as that indicated, so this is March, 2015. Now in July of 2016, here he is, facial, so much facial change in him. Look at no more circles under their eyes. Take a look at the overbite, substantial. Look at the shape of the lower arch. It was developed into an oval. You know, it's the proper development. Look at the uppers, plenty of room for that tongue. Um, we've trained him. The tongue is in the upper palate of the mouth. Totally different child. So let's see how retention works. 
here he is in April of 2018, um, doing much better. Obviously, look at how beautiful that dentition, the alignment, the intercuspation. Um, this is what you would anticipate with a healthy start. Here's another girl. This is her initial. Um, same deal. A lot of um, outward symptoms of sleep. Here she is at her finish. Let's compare the two. Initial and the final. It's quite dramatic. Um, here's another. Here's how the um, initial evaluation. You can see the deep overbite. Um, the appliance in. You can see how the adult teeth are coming in. They're angulated. It captures into the appliance. It will straighten those teeth, expand the arches. Here they are in the final with the final appliance. And let me just explain, as the teeth are coming in, these appliances are capturing them and allowing them to erupt in straight. At the same time, they're putting natural pressure on the adjacent teeth to expand the arches. So as we're guiding a tooth in straight, we're doing what nature should have done if everything went right and giving them the full expansion that we can anticipate with the eruption of the incoming teeth. Here's another case. You can see the initial and the finish. Another case, beginning end. This is an interesting um, child and understanding where the mother came from. Um, the mother apparently looked very similar to this little girl here. And the mother at age 30, late 30s, basically ended up having to have surgery um, because nothing was addressed early on. Um, and having a young child and recognizing those same characteristics that plagued her her life, during her life, she wanted to do something more and something proactive to prevent the surgery that she had later on. So here's her daughter. You can see roll lip. You can see circles under the eyes. You can see how deep that bite is in the mouth. Um, you can see kind of the squareness of the arch again. So I'm gonna show you a series of maybe four or five pictures so you can see how she progresses. So here's her next picture her, of her improvement dramatic um, facial changes. Look at the arches, look at the dentition, look at the bite, beautiful. Now let's see how well we maintain. Here she is, here she is. So you can see quite how well maintained this entire case remained during her lifetime. Um, here's another case, you can see snores, brooks, bad breath, ear infections, about a year later. This case was treated out of Alaska. Here is a sleep questionnaire again, um, fives, some fours, threes on this um, sleep questionnaire. You can see the improvement. This is just within the first year and you can see the deep bite. You can see the squareness of the arch you can change, see the changes that have occurred, and you can see the correction of the overbite as well. Here is another child, spectrum, snored, bruxed, a lot of issues. Here's mid-treatment. Here's final, 14 years later. Beautiful result. This is the kind of results, and we will help you. Part of Healthy Start's um, system is basically being a um, collaborative um, associate of yours. We wanna help you through these cases. These are, this is new to you. I mean, working with young kids, whether it's sleep, um, there's some interesting, it, you know, complications that it can occur. And we wanna make sure that we can help you through this process. So we will have you provide us with the documentation at the initial onset of your case. And we will guide you through treatment. We will help you with the treatment plan. Um, we will provide the appropriate appliances and the series that needs to happen. Um, we will be there for questions. Um, if you're nervous about something, we please provide us with second looks. We wanna see how the case is providing. We will give you clues where um, at certain points in time, 
this is what we're looking for. If you don't see that, you reach out to us so we can determine what's happening. It's a great system. So you're not left by yourself to determine these kids, but we can lend you the hand and give you that information. Um, part of that information that you receive from your patients can be um, retrieved from the app. It's a great adjunct to this treatment. Every case, you will receive an app to go along with that case. And what the app will do will help with the compliance on the patient side. Every morning when that patient wakes up, it will ask, did you wear it all night? Did it stay in all night? It will ask the parent to give any kind of updates on the sleep questionnaire if symptoms are improving. It will also ask them on Fridays to take a selfie of their child. Um, we do give cheek retractors. It will create a flip book for them. Um, every day when the child is cooperative, they will get 30 minutes of game time and a coin that they can deposit in the bank. And then um, once they accumulate a certain amount of money, they can purchase different prizes. Um, and all of that information is at a parent's fingertips so that when they're at the soccer game or they're talking to their sister or their neighbor, they can show the progress that has happened. Um, there's nothing better than that flip book. And at the same time, all that material is put into your portal at your office. So you have eyes on those cases, the 30 days or the 60 days that you do not see them. And you have those progress pictures and you have a real time change that occurs in the sleep questionnaire. So it's a really amazing tool to have um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, here's um, cheek retractors that you will use um, when they um, obviously take their selfies on Friday. So um, just to kind of recap, we have treated over 4 million cases. Um, please realize that our appliances are FDA cleared. We have no latex, no silicone. All appliances are BPA, BPS free, phthalate free. Um, we regulate ourselves to a class two medical device. We want to make sure that our parents, our doctors realize we take an extremely serious role in the safety of our children. We only want the very best for them and we will only provide materials that basically are the very best for our children and for the doctors who are treating these kids. So um, please remember that because that is an important aspect. So um, as I said, um, th this is an amazing treatment. This is an amazing technique. Um, I would love, we've only spent an hour, 45 minutes talking, and there's so much more to this equation. And I'm going to turn it over to Susie, who can kind of give you what the next step is. Where do you get the education and how do you proceed? So Susie, I don't know if we have any questions or if you want to go right into um, explaining what the digital is all about. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. Um, and yes, please, if you have any questions, I know Leslie went over some amazing information. I'm, I'm sure that your mind is probably going in a lot of directions right now. And I'm sure that a lot of that direction is thinking of children that you know who fit this mold. Um, so anyhow, so yeah, have your, use the Q&A, ask your questions, and once I finish going over, I'm telling you a little bit about our digital education series, um, I'll, we'll take those questions and answer them live. So our digital education series is one way that you can get involved with Healthy Start. Um, it is probably the most popular series. Um, our doctors truly enjoy it, and, and the reason for that is because, number one, you receive hands-on treatment of two full cases. Um, you know, and I think that's really important. And, and those, the, the entire system for those kids, we hand over to you for two of these kiddos of two different age groups because we want you to experience treating two children while you're taking the course. And this includes the, that treatment plan that Leslie was talking about. It includes specialty cases for the children to hold their appliances in. It includes that Healthy Start app. And truly, it's return on investment immediately because treating these two children is obviously, you know, um, 
a potential of $7,400 in treatment fees. This complements, um, this course actually complements the ADA policy that Leslie was talking about. And the reality is, is the ADA states that every single dentist should be treating um, or at least assessing children for sleep and breathing issues. It's really up to you to gain the education. And our education at, has actually been attended by ADA and they actually call our course ingenious. So our digital education series starts on April the 1st. We're going to actually hand you a $3,000 voucher to attend a destination course as well. Um, you know, the, the digital course is fantastic. Um, you actually have a study group that you can attend live. So basically what we do is every Monday we send you a video series. It's about an hour and a half. You have the entire week to watch the video series, you know, write down your questions, um, you know, those kinds of things, you know, kind of um, listen to that information. You have the time to do that. And then on Fridays, we have this interactive study group where we actually have a doctor who comes on, goes over the, um, you know, the highlights of the series that you just watched. But we actually have specialists that come on to every single one of these study groups and talk about different things. So the cool thing about it is that your entire staff are included um, in this study group. It's important that your staff understands what you're doing um, so they're as excited as you are about helping kids in the way that you're helping them. So in these study groups, we actually talk about everything from billing. Um, we talk about how to increase your patient flow. We talked about we talk about how to implement Healthy Start in your office. You're actually going to receive a really cool acrylic stand with a bunch of sample appliances um, so that you can actually show parents so they can see these appliances and feel them and ask questions questions in reference to how you can help their children. On top of that, you're going to receive training on pediatric treatment of sleep-related breathing disorders, how to identify it in your patients. Um, as I mentioned, it includes you and your staff. You receive 18 CE PACE credits and 16 more when you attend the destination course. Um, and it really brings immediate results to your practice. We've actually had doctors from all over the world that have attended our course. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of the some of the testimonials that we received, we received tons, but here's a few from different places around the world. We had a doctor in Australia who attended who said that our digital course was absolutely excellent. All at Healthy Start have really got their act together and offer resources others strive for but rarely achieve. Well organized, passionate, and supportive. Um, I want to thank you. This is a doctor in Canada. I want to thank you and your colleagues for this amazing course. I've been searching for a solid system to help my patients, and this is by far the best, most organized, comprehensive course I've taken. And a doctor in Colorado, I really enjoyed the course. We've identified quite a few patients that will benefit from Healthy Start. My business partner's four year old is in the habit corrector because he has had swallowing problems, and we've already seen great improvements in his eatings. We have we already have three of our patients who are ready to start next week. Can't wait to see their progress. I, I love that testimony because that is a clear picture of how it works. Um, you know, th this doctor, Dr. Wright, was actually in the third week. As I mentioned, it's a six-week series. So she was in the third week, and she already had – these um, parents knocking on her door. And the reason for that is because we're going to actually send you immediately, once you enroll in the course, we're going to send you those two habit correctors so that you can get two children started immediately. And it's amazing. I mean, the, re the results that the parents and that you will see um, once these kids start breathing better, um, it it's amazing. So um, they start telling other parents. And next thing you know, um, other parents are knocking on your door because of what you're doing and how you're helping these children. So anyway, so that's, that's a common thing that happens. And I already mentioned that ADA took our course and said that it was absolutely ingenious. So how do you get started? Um, well, there's a couple of different ways. And actually tonight, as a thank you to you for um, joining us, we're actually doing giving you guys a $200 off of the um, course cost. So the course cost is $3,400. Um, that includes those two free cases. It includes everything that I just talked about. Um, but we're going to give you $200 off tonight. You can actually go to openairwaydentistry.com. There's a discount code area. You just type in the word airway and that will take that $200 off. So that's one simple way that you can register for the course immediately. And truly, we will literally have a package out to you within the next day or two. The course starts April the 1st and that's a Monday. And I mentioned those study clubs that we do on Fridays. Um, you know, if you're not able to make it onto the study club live, that's okay. We record everything and we will send you everything to keep you up to date to make sure that you have everything in your hand. 
and truly to give you every tool that you need to succeed. You know, we have thought of everything. I mean, we have, we, we reach out, as Leslie mentioned, I mean, we not only um, educate our doctors, but we educate your parents as well. Um, you know, that's all part of it. It's all part of our program. So if you have questions or if you want to register directly through me, you can do that as well. And you can reach me, as you can see, my email address is on the screen. It's slafredo at thehealthystart.com. And I can answer any additional questions that you might have in reference to registering. Um, what I can say is don't wait. Um, you know, this is something that once you know it, it's, you know, it's hard to come up with reasons as to why you wouldn't help kids in this way. It, I mean, you're going to see these kids. It's so funny because we were talking, uh, Leslie and I were actually in Boston at the Yankee Dental Convention over this last couple of days. And I can't even tell you how many doctors came up and they said, you know, we have, you know, we've learned this information and now we, we just, we don't look at kids the same way. You know, they come in and now we see that venous pooling under the eye, the eyes. We see these kids coming in and we see the chap lips and we're thinking, oh my gosh, this child is mouth breathing. You know, we see those narrow palates and we are now thinking, oh my gosh, I, you know, it, you will, you will look at children in a, such a different way. And now you have the tools to help them and it just changes everything. So um, don't wait, you know, change lives with us, um, become a part of our team. And it's such an easy, simple way. And, you know, I, I think we, we'd really try to make it as simple as we can for you, not only to take the course, but also to treat these two patients and get started immediately. So um, Leslie, is there anything that you'd like to add before we sign off for the night? No, I just um, look forward to seeing you. Um, again, like Susie said, please take the time, start screening those kids um, for airway issues. And um, I hope Healthy Star can be a big part in how we address and treat these airway issues. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. I look forward to seeing you um, hopefully at another um, April course um, that will begin shortly. I can't believe it's already hopefully spring. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I, I hope you have a wonderful evening. If you have any questions or any further comments, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we answer everything we get. So anyways, have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Susie, so much for um, putting this together. And um, hopefully we'll talk soon. Yeah. And thank you to Leslie for taking time out this evening to, to share with everyone. I, we appreciate that so much. Um, so and thank you, talk doctors, for being on tonight. And um, please, please, please. Um, contact us if there's anything you need or visit openairwaydentistry.com and get signed up and let's get going. Have Take a good care. night. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. looks like we ha might have one quick question. Um, oh, Dr. Gonzalez, thank you so much. And just Leslie, just so you know, Dr. Gonzalez um, on the chat said that this was great. So um, it's such amazing information. So I, we appreciate that so much. It's absolutely my pleasure. I love it when we all have that aha moment. It's, it's the best. So anyways, I hope you had your aha moment tonight. So anyways, take care. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.